from a place we're not allowed to reveal. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Yes. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No. I... I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. A survey of divorce attorneys shows that 88% of American divorce attorneys say they've seen an increase in the number of cases using email, text messaging, instant messaging, and browser history as evidence in divorce cases. And women are doing it more than men. Another reason not to get married. You're being spied on all the time, right? 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's 1-800-5800-866. Mia on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey, I just wanted to comment, um, you know... You don't believe in marriage because, you know, you don't have any religion. And so, of course, it doesn't mean that much to you. But for those that do, you know, have a fear in God and have a religion. Mm. So you fear God, is that right? Definitely. Are you married? No, but I um, am in a serious relationship. We've been talking about marriage. All right. And so you are a virgin, correct? No. I am not a virgin. I've made some... Different choices and bad choices in my life. However, oh, well, once leaving, you realize you'd made a bad choice, you stopped having sex, correct? I have, yes. So, have. You, so how long have you not been having sex now? For hmm, six months. Six months. So, how long were you sexually active? For um, twelve years. So, so, you've been having sex since you were about fourteen. Um. Sixteen, actually, eleven. All right. So you had no morals for eleven years. Is that correct? No, I did have morals. However, you had morals, but you were busy I, fornicating. I was. How? So how? How does? So if if a fornicator has morals, then who doesn't? I had a belief, but I didn't have a relationship with God. Ah, uh, I see. Well, so I you, always have believed in Him, but I didn't have a relationship. Ah. Uh, but, however, regardless of that, I'm just making a point on, you know. So 11 years of banging away in every possible position and doing whatever you wanted, and now you're preaching to other people that they have no morals. No, actually, I'm saying that you don't have a relationship. Well, what that. position are you in? What position are you in to criticize others? You're a fornicator. That wasn't a criticism. I'm just stating why you don't believe in marriage. Not believing in your... God does not mean I have no morals. Um, actually, I was wondering, since you're talking about morals, where do you get your morals from if it's not religious? Well, you know, unlike weak individuals like yourself, oh. uh, who, who are not centered and uh, do not have any self-realization, uh, I do not need uh, a book of fairy tales in order to create my own morality. Right. So where do you get your morality from? Society? It's very simple. I don't do to other people things I don't want done to me. Oh, like bang uh, little nineteen-year-old girls and uh, only and because they, only it. because they want it. I'm sure they have some intention of pursuing some kind of relationship with you. Like, well, I don't know what that is, and I don't lie to them and tell them I, that I'm in love with them or that I'm going to marry them. So I'm very upfront about it. Well, that was, I was just scared, because this is not the first time I've heard you talk about uh, morals, your morals, and how other people don't have morals, and I was just wondering... No, I think most of the people who call radio shows preaching about morality are immoral themselves. (laughs) Well, you know, we all fall short. 
However, including yourself, you know, and therefore you're not in a position to criticize others, are you? I w- was that a criticism or was a question? It was your attempt. No, it was, there was no question mark. You specifically said, uh, to paraphrase, that I don't care about marriage because I don't have morals. That wasn't a criticism. That was a statement. But but a but why would you assume I don't have morals? Because I don't subscribe to the fairy tale that you believe in? No, I believe that you do have morals, but I believe that you get them from society, which I think is twisted because society's morals are messed up. Well, guess what? Whether you like it or not, society decides what is moral and what is not. Not the Bible and not you. Most of society's uh, laws and rules... Well, you guess are, what, dear? I don't know what planet you're calling from, but planet Earth works this way. Uh, the people, at least in this country, decide what is moral and what is not. Not Most of you. morals are based on the Bible. Uh, no, they're not. Oh, you wouldn't believe so? Uh, no, actually, I don't. I would have to disagree. Well, like, darling, uh, let's go the over the history. The country is, it says, in God we trust. I don't care what the currency says, dear. Uh, let's go, let's review some of the fine Christian principles of the founding of our country. Are you ready? Okay. All right. Slavery. Mm. Well, okay. How I Christian mean, was that? I can't, I can't, I, I can't really comment on that. It, was that a Christian value? My opinion was that a Christian me? value, yes or no? Definitely not, but I believe that uh, it, it, it's such on another subject, I believe. It's not another subject. Is that a Christian value? And you no. said no. All right, no, let's try not. another of the what, many fine values this country was founded on, genocide. No, in fact, I'm not even familiar with exactly what that is. You don't know what genocide is? No, I've heard it before. I know that it's uh, it's bad, but I don't really know. You know it's bad, but you don't know what it is. Uh, you know no, who? That's hi- negative. <laughs> Do you know who? You're 27. You don't know the word genocide. Ever heard of a guy named Adolf Hitler? Yeah. What did he do? And he um, killed a lot of the or the Jews. That Adolf. Yeah, that's called genocide. Genocide, when okay. you pick a group and decide to kill them, it's genocide. Okay. How about well, no, how about how about how about, about how about all the Can Indians? I... How, no, no, you can't. You're going to follow the bouncing ball in this conversation. Okay. Uh, no, but, not that either. So uh, not that. Wait, wait, wait. You, you're going to you're going to follow the bouncing ball here. Okay. I'll tell you when it's time for you to introduce a new point. I will tell you. I'm I'm the boss here. Okay. <laughs> okay, boss. Yes. So, bottom line, genocide was uh, one of the uh, founding principles of our country. Was that Christian? No. No. Uh, You may be aware that until the mid-1800s, that black people were considered three-fifths human in the United States by law. Was that a Christian principle? No, but there are many. No, but... No, no, but give me examples of of other things, but I've got many examples of what is Christian. We'll get to those. Because but the point is, it, the point is, eventually, uh, eventually, you're going to find things in common. But I'm telling you of all kinds of things uh, that were uh, the true and 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 part of the founding of this country. Where uh, do you think God thought of black people as three fifths human? No, but I don't know where God... Well, that was one of the founding principles of our country. That was one of the founding principles. Let me give you another one. In the beginning, only rich people could vote. Landowners. Was that Christian? No. No. Let's get on the list. Women were not equal, in fact, until 1920. That's over 140 years. Women could not vote in this country. Christian principle? Absolutely not. However, right. so, so you, what I'm trying to tell you, darling, is that this country was hardly a Christian nation. We, we killed Indians. We discriminated against blacks and women. Right? Okay? We had slaves. That's hardly a religious nation. So, um, you seeing it as you do, um, as it not being religious? Uh, it's not. Separation of church and state. Ever heard that phrase? Morality from society, either, because we know that. Have you ever heard the phrase "separation of church and state"? Yes. Yes, that's not just a phrase. That's the way it is. 
Right. Okay, so if you feel like that, then you can... It's not that I feel like that. No, forget it. It's not that I feel like that. That's the law of the land. That is the law of the land. You can sit there and go hamana, hamana, hamana all you want. That's the law. And you you don't even know what genocide is, dear. You're in no position to debate this with me. You don't know, and you have not read, and you are not informed. You were busy getting laid in high school. You were not studying history. I was studying, and if you don't have to and be getting smart, laid. To be smart you were studying and getting laid. That That's great. Brain. But the point is, you know nothing about history, and you know nothing about civics, because separation of church and state is the law of the United States. And always has been. Oh, I believe that is based uh, a lot, largely on on the Bible. Really? So Whatever slavery, genocide, women not equal, uh, black people not equal, uh, that all of those things, Christian principles? Mm-hmm. Um, I No, they're not Christian principles. However, I believe that uh, a lot of things were like... Um, a lot of the laws. Like so, what? You know, um, like, um, just the things that you're not supposed to do. Kill. Which? Rape. Steal. Uh, abuse people. Assault. Actually, killing is okay. If you're an American uh, member of the armed forces, killing is perfectly okay. As protection. as No. Is Iraq a threat to the United States? Um, I believe with their terrorists, they are a threat. Was Vietnam a threat to the United States? Who? Vietnam. North Vietnam, specifically. <laughs> You've never heard of Vietnam, yeah, right? I have. I have. I don't know exactly what's going on in Vietnam. I know. Well, that, nothing so. right now because we lost no. the war in Vietnam. In case, again, you were not studying history. You were busy uh, porking away. <laughs> okay, Tom. So, Look um, up the Vietnam the War. Check it out sometime. The question is, where do you get your morality from if it's not from Well, the Bible? God forbid I got it from the history of the United States. Well, yeah, I hope not. But but you just said it's Christian. Wait, you, just, wait, you say, I, you hope not. You just said it's a Christian nation. I, I, I did, but I do agree that there's a lot of corrupt, corrupt things that go on. But I believe that it was based on the Bible. And Darling, killing God, is illegal in every country in the world. It's illegal everywhere, including many country, including, including many countries that are not Christian. Do you think murder is legal in China? No. Is China a Christian nation? No, but I believe. Do you think murder been- is legal in India? Do you think murder is legal in India? No, I be- don't believe so. But they is India a Christian nation? No, but they have a religion. Tom. Also, now <laughs> it's religion. But do you? Religion, ag- I said you don't have a religion. Oh, because I don't have a religion. So you have to have a religion. How about Satanism? <laughs> That's a religion. Well, hopefully you don't have that. Why not? That's a religion. That is a horrible religion. It's a religion. So is uh, witchcraft, Wiccanism. Well, Wicca. I would imagine even if you were a, state, a Satanist that you would have, you know, that that would determine your morality. How about Tom Cruise? He's a Scientologist. What about that? Would you like to have the principles of Scientology? No, I just, you know. Why not? Also, it's a religion. Their religion determines their morals, though. And since you don't have one, I just wonder where your morals are. Again, I, I am proof well, you don't. I am proof. I am proof you do not need a religion to have morals. <laughs> I disagree. How about the Catholic Church? How about the Catholic Church covering up for all those priests who were diddling all the little altar boys? Was that was that uh, was that Christian principles there? No. No. But I believe that you've answered my question. Isn't that amazing? Can you take me out with a bomb? What 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 religion do you believe in? By the way, what sect of Christianity? And you know you're a Christian. What sect of Christianity do you belong to? Um, I am um, pretty much Baptist. What does Baptist. that mean? Baptist church. One from column A and one from column B. <laughs> I, I'm you know. Baptist is what I think. Pretty much Baptist. Yeah, I'm, you know, Baptist. You remember the PMB church, the pretty much Baptist church. Okay. <laughs> you're Baptist unless it's inconvenient. Then you're not Baptist. I am. I am Baptist. And I'm trying my hardest to to be a woman of God and do the right things. But, of course, the flesh is... Well, now, that you've had, now that you've had 11 years of pure, unadulterated, raw sex... 
talking to people about 50 years. By the way, isn't uh, Jesse Jackson a Baptist minister? Yes, he is. What's the name of his little bastard child, Jesse Jackson Jr.? <laughs> little bastard child, huh? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that he had with his, uh, his assistant. Wow. While he was married for 30 years to Mrs. It's Jesse Jackson? People with religion to be perfect, Tom. Nobody's perfect. Well, then, you, then, 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 by the way, dear, then you shouldn't be calling in and accusing other people of not having morals because they don't believe in a religion. You're very defensive, Tom. Darling, there's nothing defensive about this. I wasn't accusing you of anything. I'm not the least bit defensive. Oh, okay, Tom. Take me out of my hand, please. Finally. Here you go. <coughs> Tom like is one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom one eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. What's at the base of all of this? You know, uh, banging chicks. It's like it's kind of a biological urge. What's at the base of eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day? <laughs> okay, all right. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Alexis on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? How are you? I'm great. Um, I just heard your questions about marriage, and I wanted to call in and tell you that um, I think women get married because they have the belief in romance and their happy ending. No, that's complete baloney. Women, uh, by the way, you find that out when women get divorced, and you see how much they believe in romance and happy endings when they hire attorneys and they uh, are telling you how much they're entitled to and how much they deserve. Uh, I've been divorced. I've been divorced, and I've seen it myself more than once. No one gets married with the intention of getting divorced. You. Uh, oh, I agree with like, you, and that's why I'm saying women have nothing to lose by getting married. They they think it's going to last forever, but they also know that if it doesn't, they're going to get money. I think that's unfortunate that you think that way. That's how it is. I don't think for all women at all. I never used the word all. You did. Okay, so for the majority of women, is that what you're saying? In general. In general. That's too bad that you think that poorly of women. That's how it is. Okay. That's why women push so hard to get married. I, re I don't think that's true. Really? Well, can't you yeah. love someone without being married to them? Sure, but it's like I think marriage is kind of like the final level of commitment for your No, it's it's the final level. Uh, yeah, well, it's amazing how words like commitment and institution are always found not far from the word marriage. <laughs> I guess that's right, but I don't that's my that's my belief on marriage and I'm not trying to put anyone down or question their morality or throw my morality on anyone else, but that's just what I think. Yeah. Yeah. What is your husband's name? I don't have a husband. I'm 25 and single and having a blast. Mm, so when do you plan to get married? When I meet Mr. Wright. You understand after 25, the chances of meeting him start to diminish. Well, <laughs> I sure hope not. That's a statistical fact. I'm in no rush, though. I'm, I think you should not be in a rush, frankly. Uh you know, I think uh, women's uh, window of opportunity to get married is between 25 and 30. After 30... Good luck. No luck. You're heading for spinsterdom. <laughs> That's too bad. That's how it is. I don't think so. By the way, Dean says you called about something totally else. What did you tell Dean you wanted to talk about? Oh, well, I am on my way down to L.A. from Santa Barbara, and I've never heard your show before, and I heard you just talking to that older lady that was laying into you, and I just thought it was fascinating. So you really do have people's attention, I guess. Well, that's not what not you said to Dean. I'm going to read it. Because you won't say it, I'm going to read it off the screen, because Dean was typing as you were talking. Oh, uh, how do you get away with it? Oh, see, now you do remember what you called in to say. Yeah. Cause so why did you change your tune? Why did you start backpedaling when you get on the air? No, 
I'm just saying, like, how do you really get away with being a successful DJ? I'm guessing that you are. I've never heard of you. How do I get away with being? No, you, you don't get away with being successful. If you're successful, you can do whatever you want. I'm successful because the proof is in the numbers. This show is the number one show among men in the afternoon. Among men in the afternoon. That's men. an interesting statistic. Why do you say that? Because of the way that you talk to women. God, again, this show is not for women. It's for men. Oh, I get you. Well, see, I, I've i never heard of it. I have no idea. Well, that's because our show is not currently on in Santa Barbara. Yeah. But it is on It is on in Ventura and Oxnard and Los Angeles and Orange County and Riverside and San Bernardino. Well, I heard there's a bunch of frat boys at UCSB that put a antenna on top of their house and they get your show. So, touche, Tom. That's how, well, that, that's how you stay on the air because people want to hear your show so bad, they put up a tower. Interesting. Maybe I'll go hang out at the frat house. Well, just remember, they're going to expect you to put out. Not at all. I'm too old for that. Too old to put out? No, <laughs> I want to hang out at frat houses. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> I've used a mess. Have you ever been there? No. It's an interesting scene. No. I own a house in Santa Barbara County, but I've never been to the university. You should go party in IV sometime. I'm sure they would love you. Maybe I will. I go there and tell them how to have all the sex they want without ever being committed in a relationship. You know, I should really pay a visit. And so that what you've used your fame and success and Th money for? That's how I became famous. By telling oh. men about that. <laughs> How to be playboys their whole life? Not just playboys. Why should we sign contracts to give you our wealth? Forget it. So why buy the cow and you can get the milk for free? Huh? Damn straight. A lot of them are cows in this country, too. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You're ridiculous. I compare women to cars. You know, uh, they lose 20% of their value once you drive them off the lot. But there's nothing like a classic. Uh, Donna, a a uh, <laughs> classics uh, creak. Uh, they emit fumes. Uh, they have to be repaired all the time. So you're just going to keep trading it in for a newer, younger. Model? Absolutely. Why buy when you can lease? Wow, you're amazing, Tom. I always drive the newest model. <laughs> you are just living the dream, huh? Yes, I am. And by the way, all men would if they could. Do you really think? That's right. Any yeah. man who's with anything less than the youngest, hottest chick has settled because he can't afford any better. Wow. It's a pretty bold statement. It's true. Do you have no desire? You've been married before. Sorry, I don't listen, so I don't know your... I've been married before. and divorced before, yes. Which I'm guessing is single. I'm unmarried. I don't use the word single. Single is desperate. Okay, you're unmarried. Single implies there's a vacuum that needs to be filled. And you have zero paternal instinct to spread your seed and procreate and be a dad. Oh, well, I like spreading my seed mostly into the other end of a latex condom. <laughs> okay, so be, to be a father ever, you have no desire. I, even if I did, I wouldn't get married. Bad business deal. <laughs> You would just have all these little kids running around? Um, well, no, I don't have any little kids running around, but if I were going to have kids, uh, I would not get buried to do it. Why not? Because it's too costly. To get married? You think kids aren't costly? It, but, but having to pay your bills is even more expensive. If I, all I have to pay is child support, it's a lot cheaper than having to pay you. But you don't have that desire. Like, do you have a desire to ever be a father? No. That's unfortunate. Why? Because you're never going to, like, I don't think that, I don't know. I really am stoked about being a mother someday, but I'm in no rush to be to be there. Uh-huh. And I will never have a child outside of marriage. So for me, that's the only way well, I... There you go. Me having kids. Well, that would be, see, that if I were dating you, that would be my out. <laughs> Well, there's reason. We can't have kids because you wouldn't have kids outside of marriage, and I have no plans on getting married. So we would never work. Well, you could date me until you met Mr. Wright. I don't think so. Then after I put a few hundred thousand miles on your odometer, then, then, then he could drive you off into the sunset, all your flat tires and bent rims, and right. after you bottomed out over some of those speed bumps. Then I'll pass you on to somebody else. 
You really do like your little car analogy. Yes, I, I, because it's so true. Oh. As I said on the air, and I've said it more than once, you know, boys grow up dreaming of cars. They watch car races on TV, and they read, like, Road and Track, Car and Driver. And they dream of cars. And you know what, little boys, what kind of cars do you think boys dream of when they're kids? Fast cars. Fast cars, like a Lamborghini, right, or a Boxster. Yeah, any kind of Porsche, Maserati. My name is Alexis. What's that? <laughs> My name is Alexis. I'm a luxury vehicle. Oh, really? Yeah. Kind of bland styling. It's kind of like riding a leather sofa. Is that you? <laughs> Far from it. Yeah. You're not the ultimate driving machine, I take it. Oh, now you've gone too far. Mm -hmm. uh, the bottom line is that, uh, so boys, as I told you, when they're little boys, uh, they dream of driving a Lamborghini or a Maserati or some sports car, even a Corvette or something like that. Mm -hmm. But the reality is when, when guys grow up, most guys these days, what do they drive? Toyota Corollas. Sure. You know, they drive Honda Civics. My favorite is a guy in a Volkswagen Bug. Guys don't drive Volkswagen Bugs unless they're the old version. The new one is for gay men and women. Bet. I've seen it. All right. But the bottom line, you get, don't get in the way of my analogy here because I'm trying to make a point. Okay. And the point is this. When guys grow up, they can't afford a Maserati. They can't get a Maserati or a, even a BMW many times. So most guys drive cars like a Toyota Corolla. And what is a Toyota Corolla? Uh, very reliable. Very mm -hmm. dependable. It'll go hundreds of thousands of miles. Not mm -hmm. very stylish, not sporty, not very interesting to look at. It'll get you where you want to go. It'll require very low maintenance. That's what most guys drive, right? And you, and with all your success and fame and stardom, what do you drive? No, no, we, we, darling, you're getting in the way of the analogy. Okay. Go I ahead. asked you not to do that, okay? Sorry, I forgot it's your show. So, all right, so most guys, yeah, it is my show. Yeah, it's easy to remember. You don't have a show. I do. Okay. Keep that in mind. Okay. So here's how it works. Okay? Most guys grow up dreaming of a Maserati and they're driving a Toyota Corolla. And you know what? The same thing is true about women. Guys grew up with pictures of Carmen Electra on their wall, but they're driving a Toyota Corolla. <laughs> okay. Right? Now, if they could afford Carmen Electra, they'd have her. But they don't. Right. If they can afford Pamela Anderson, they'd have her, but they can't. So they they marry the 180 pound, five foot four dynamo with lesbified hair, who wears the uh, sweatpants and the floral print uh, stretch pants, and goes around barking orders like 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 a prison guard. Wow! Right, that's what they marry. But if they, I I did a show and I asked guys, if you won the lottery, would you dump that bitch? Oh. God, and the vast beautiful. majority said they would. Wow. So guys are only with you because you're the best they can do. Wow. Not because of love. Water seeks its own level. It's a pretty interesting statement. Well, think about it. Don't you think the average guy would rather be with uh, uh, somebody like uh, Adriana Lima? Sure. Right? But instead, they get uh, Jennifer from next door, who had a skin problem. <laughs> Why does every woman who's not a supermodel have to be so flawed in your eyes? Again, that's my point is, well, look, it's like if you, if, sometimes, there used to be a car dealer in Phoenix, Arizona, uh, who used to advertise on the radio that he had a large selection of damaged cars because of the recent hailstorm. So you could go in and pick up, like, you know, like a Crown Victoria with some uh, dents on the hood. Okay. And you get them at very low prices. So, for example, a lot of guys take a woman with a good body, but, uh, you know, she's got a pizza face <laughs> or some other kind of physical flaw. And that's how you get them at a discount. Okay. Right? Got it. Well, you th don't you think the average guy wants to be with Carmen Electra? Sure, but the why, average well, guy's not ever going to get Carmen Electra. Why not? Because they can't afford Carmen Electra, right? Mm, I don't know about that. Oh. Well, what, what, what other reason would there be? 
because they're not. They can never just get Carmen Electra. How about getting somebody who looks as good as Carmen Electra? And how many Carmen there are, Electras are there? Well, they're in limited supply, and that's why guys with money get the Carmen Electras. And then your average guy drives a Toyota Corolla. That makes sense. There you go. So the bottom line is when guys marry you, it's not love. They tried and tried, and you were the best they could get. Ouch. That's, I guess, is that, is that intended as a compliment? No, it's just the truth. I'm, I'm the best that they could get? That you're the best they could do. They, they settled? If they could do better, they would, but they couldn't. That hurts. No wonder your show's intended for men. I can't believe women would listen to this. By the way, darling, I got bad news for you. It works both ways. Why? You'd love to be. You'd love to be. Who's your favorite actor? Um, I don't even know. It's not someone that's, like, crazy hot, though. Who's the hottest celebrity in Hollywood? I would say in Hollywood. Yeah, as an example. Hollywood, London, show business. Somebody, with, somebody famous. Well, my number one's an athlete, so you can't even... All right. Well, who? Matt Leinert. Who? Oh, Matt Leinert? Yeah. All right. Well, don't you think a lot of women would like to be with Matt Leinert? I guess a few have. <laughs> well, a lot of women would like to be with Matt Leinert, right? Right. Well, why do some women get him but not you? I don't want him. He's, I've heard he's nasty. But I just, like, I think he's really hot. That's How that's about someone name. who looks like Matt Leinert? Why can't you get a guy like that? Who says I haven't? Well, where is he now? Just because I'm single doesn't mean I haven't been with guys that look like Matt Liner. I'll bet you haven't been with guys who make as much money as Matt Liner. No. Because you'd, 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 if you were playing musical chairs, you'd have sat down right at that moment. And would have married him and taken half of it. That's easy. See, now you're speaking my language. <laughs> Not at all. That's exactly what you would have done. No. Yes. If you met a guy that rich, you would have married him. And the only reason you haven't gotten married yet is because you haven't met a guy with sufficient funds. I but mean, you see, you're not as good looking as the chicks that Tom Brady and Matt Leinert and others date. So you're going to have to settle for a nice guy, a nice, reliable, dependable guy. He's probably not as hot as the guys you've had sex with, but he's reliable and dependable and he won't have sex with your best friend or he won't do things behind your back. At least you think he won't. So you're going to have to settle for the best you can get. So one morning, darling, you're going to wake up. You're going to sit down at the breakfast table. And you got to look across the table. And you know who's going to be there? The love of my the, life. Some, the love of your life. Prince Charming. It's going to be some guy with a receding hairline, kind of chunky, who scratches his balls and smells his finger after he does it. Then he watches ESPN. That's as close <laughs> as you're ever going to get. Thanks. I'm here to help. Well, now I know why your show is for men and why you're... Unmarried. Now you know why I'm number one. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800. The Tom Likas Show from Hollywood at 1-800-5800-TOM. Brandy, you're on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom Likas. How are you today? Do you care, Brandy? Yeah, I do. I've been listening to your show for a long time. I really, really enjoy it. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, I had this question, um, and what it is is, like, I know you, you speak to people all the time, but your expressions, I mean, I know you're an atheist, right? You are, as well as I am. Um, your expressions, you always use, like, oh, God, or you say Jesus a lot, and I'm wondering where that came from and why you still use it. If you, It's called irony, dear. Yeah, I thought so, and um, I still do it, too, and I was just wondering, um, you know, if it, if it meant anything to you, or... No, it's irony. Okay. Yeah, that makes total sense. Um, you're just using it like that to... No, I'm praying to God, God Almighty. <laughs> I'm praying to Jesus. Every time a stupid person calls in, I get on my uh... knees and ask Jesus for help. Not, oh my gosh, Tom, I am so relieved. I've been wanting to ask you this question. You really thought that I was uh, expressing some religious exclamation there? No, no, I never thought that, but I, I just wanted to know why you did it. Oh, 
What did you think it could possibly mean? Um, just to get closer to people or to just, I don't know, like the expression of the day. You mean to uh, pretend to be religious in order to get more listeners? Maybe so. No, 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 not that. No, just, um... I, I'm not sure. If you could explain it more, that would be cool. I just did. You were good at that. <laughs> what more do you need? Oh, not so much more, but uh, I... I, well, I think you need something. What? My open palm hitting the left buttock. <laughs> oh, my goodness, Tom. Oh, well... Notice you never said no. No, I did not. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think I'm due for one of the smacks. <laughs> I think you're ready. Yeah, I know. So anyway, um, look, I just, I love your show so much, and I really can't disagree with anything you're saying when I, okay. Wait, I this, this update just came in. I'm looking at my right hand, and yeah. written on my open palm is the name Brandy, with an I, is with an I? Yikes. It's right there. I can almost feel my butt tingling. <laughs> I knew, I knew what you needed when you, right, the minute you called in, I knew. Don't you want to interview me? I guess not. I'm too boring already. <laughs> Are you hot? Uh, no. Yes, yes, I am. Uh, I grew up in Santa Cruz County. My dad was a surfer. Um, I grew up on the beach. Um, I'm married now. I have kids. I don't think I'm hot anymore. Yeah, but you'd step out of your marriage for a good crack in the ass for me. I know you would. You know, my marriage right now, I'm so happy, and I don't have any problems in that area, and I'm so thankful. When's the last time you got a good ass cracking at home? <laughs> Whether it is just to be reprimanded verbally, which is an ass cracking in, its, in, a, in a way, or, you know, just some good darn good old, like, mm, you know, I love you in the morning, I love you in the night, and the middle of the afternoon is fine and that's what makes me happy and I think it, it makes a lot if of I gave you an ass cracking darling you'd be happy <laughs> Tom are you giving me any free gifts away yeah really yeah here's yeah. my my here's my open palm no charge <laughs> well okay I felt that <laughs> oh you're gonna feel something uh, I always feel something whenever I listen to your show. You're blushing yeah. right now. Yes, I am. I'm, I feel hot from top to bottom. <laughs> I'm blushing, and my fingers are tingling, actually, and my toes feel kind of numb. Imagine how my fingers are going to be tingling after having contact with your ass. I feel starstruck, like I just like walked into like a movie star, you know. Look at that. Uh, I, I, I have my son. He's 18. And another one, this, he just turned 11 yesterday. His name is Devin. Devin turned 11 on the 11th. So it was really special. And um, we were in the car and we were listening to your show. And he said, Mom, don't turn that off. And I'm like, okay, you don't want to hear your tape? And he said, no, Mom, I, I think I like Tom like this now. I'm like, oh, you're really growing up, aren't you, honey? Oh, yeah. Yeah, really. He'd love to see his mom get a good crack. <laughs> he knows I already do. He knows we're happy. So, um... What? We're not dysfunctional, but, Tom, in regard to being atheist and agnostic or whatever it is, I don't tell my kids to, like, go around and, um... Well, what I tell them to do is learn everything you can. I put a stack of books in front of them. I give them a library card. I said, read everything you can. And then you determine what you want to do. And they say, yeah, that's all great. And that's the way my father raised me, the surfer back in Santa Cruz. Mm. Oh, Santa Cruz. Uh, now I know you like good crack in the ass. Dude. <laughs> you and your dad probably oh, smoked pot together. Growing up in a hot beach town and just loving every minute of, of it. Did you and you know? your dad smoke weed together? Mm, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you did, didn't you? You know, Daddy grew weed back in the 80s before it was um, illegal to grow for sick people. That was one of his things, and he was a contractor. Oh, I, I, you're not, not you're not just, you don't just want to crack in the ass. You're a screamer, and I can tell. The Tom Like.